This morning, our reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew. In this teaching, the Lord may challenge us. He will ask us to love our neighbors. Beyond this, He will ask us to love our enemies too. Do you think it's easy to love enemies? You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth. But I will tell you not to resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, Do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Amen. Let me invite children to come forward if they want. Do you remember where the Lord, uh, where did the Lord have his home? What province did he have home in Judah or Galilee? He had his home in the province of Galilee, which was far north province, Capernaum, the small city in there. And where was the church at the time? The province of Judah. So the Lord has his own very far north up there, and the church was down here. So which made him travel quite often to visit the church, to come back home. And that gave him the opportunity to meet with many people. And the Lord loved that opportunity to engage himself with strangers And also the Lord loved to teach them how we can go to heaven. And when the opportunity was given, the Lord made many sick people better. So when the Lord became very popular, and when he showed up in a town, every person in the town wanted to come to the Lord to see him. And the Lord wandering around, he was traveling around in the province of Galilee, and he came back, perhaps his home. Now many people showed up to see the Lord, to hear from him. Perhaps there were too many people, so the Lord took them to a mountain nearby. And on top of the mountain, the Lord sat down there, and he opened his mouth. And he taught them. And perhaps the people loved to hear from him because he taught 
with authority which they never seen before. And the Lord talked about we should love our neighbors and he went further and he pointed out we should love our enemies too. Do you have enemies? You don't have any? Even not your sibling is not your enemy? <laughs> Very good. Unfortunately, we have some people who are not very nice, who are not very kind, sometimes very mean. And we know there's some dangerous people out there. Say them, they are our enemies. Even it is a challenge to love our neighbors, family members and close relatives and friends. So it is a challenge to love those mean and unkind people. And when the Lord said this, do you think the Lord really loved his enemies? He loved his enemies. The Lord visited a town in Samaria, and we talked about how uh, Israelites didn't like the Samaritans. And Samaritans either loved they didn't love the Jewish people, Orthodox Jewish people. But the Lord visited a Samaritan town and he sat down near the well and he taught the people. And many people gathered. They were very glad to hear from the Lord. And the Lord talked about how the people in Galilee were not good. And the Lord perhaps revealed that he was the Messiah prophesied, foretold before, and the people got so upset, they became very angry and took the Lord to the edge of the cliff. What's going to happen? They may push the Lord, but we know that the Lord was very powerful, so they couldn't do anything. The Lord went on his way. And many people came to the Lord, so the Lord fed a few thousand people, and even his disciples came up to the Lord, the Lord, how can we do, feed these many people? But the Lord said, what you have, five fishes and two pieces of bread, and gave them, and successfully fed more than 5,000 people and gathered the leftover into 12 baskets. So even though the Lord was challenged, many times he was threatened, but the Lord never paid back evil for their evil. The Lord loved them, and the best way the Lord showed his love was teaching the truth to them. So sometimes we may face the same situation. We, may deal, we have to deal with unkind person, mean person, maybe dangerous person, and we can avoid facing that person. But later when we have an opportunity, we can tell what is the right thing to do, maybe to a friend in a better circumstances. And the Lord didn't mind telling the truth and taught them how to be better. And the Lord sometimes had to uh, avoid some dangerous situations, but the Lord didn't mind telling the truth and teaching them. And this is the way we can love our enemies. It is a very difficult, it is sometimes dangerous, it is sometimes very tough to face our enemies, but what we can do is telling them what's the right thing to do, as the Lord taught teachings to those evil people. And we know that the Lord became very popular. So wherever he went, people showed up and wanted to learn from him. And if we treat mean people, unkind people in this way by sharing what's the right thing to do, maybe we may be popular because we are doing the right thing. Can we do that? Yes, we can try. Amen. 
Please bow your head for blessing. The Lord give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Amen. Our second reading is taken from chapter 24 of the book of Leviticus. Whoever kills any man shall surely be put to death. Whoever kills an animal shall make it good animal for animal. If a man causes disfigurement of his neighbor, as he has done, so shall it be done to him. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he has caused the disfigurement of a man, so shall it be done to him. And whoever kills an animal shall restore it. But whoever kills a man shall be put to death. You shall have the same law for the stranger and for one from your own country. For I am the Lord your God. Then Moses spoke to the children of Israel, and they took outside the camp him who had cursed and stoned him with the stones. So the children of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses. Our further reading is a portion taken from the work True Christian Religion 407. I have a little bit different translation, so you may compare. It needs to be said what loving the neighbor means. Loving the neighbor is not only wishing well and doing good to a relative, a friend, or a good person, but also to a stranger, one who is no friend or a wicked person. But charity is exercised in different ways with these two groups by means of a direct kindness to a relative or a friend, but by indirect kindnesses to one who is no friend or a wicked. These indirect kindnesses are done by way of appeals, penalties, and punishments and so by attempts to reform him. The following can serve as an illustration. A judge who punishes a wrongdoer according to the law and justice is loving his neighbor. For does he reforms him and takes care to prevent his fellow citizens being wronged. Everyone knows that a father who chastises his children, when they do wrong, loves them. And in the opposite case, if he does not chastise them for it, he loves their faults, and this cannot be called charity. Moreover, if anyone repairs an unfriendly attack and strikes the attacker in self-defense or hands him over to a judge, so as to avoid the suffering harm, still with the intention of becoming his friend, his actions are in the mainstream of charity. Neither are words which are intended to protect one's country or church contrary to charity. The purpose for which they are undertaken determines whether or not they are charitable. Amen. Here in the lessons, bless the day who hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. 
Have you ever tried to love someone from your heart, someone who is not a family member, someone who is not a friend, perhaps someone who is not kind to you? We know how difficult loving others is. It is a challenge to understand and love even close friends, family members, and spouses. Because of its toughness, we might feel content when we love our partners and friends. However, the Lord teaches us not only to love our neighbors, but also those who curse us, those who hate us, those who persecute us, in a word, our enemies. As a matter of fact, this was said in the imperative form. The Lord never said, would you like to consider? You should do it. The Lord strongly urges us, love your enemies, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Are you overwhelmed? In Galilee, the Lord taught about good works, what they must be and what heavenly happiness is, which comes from good works. These teachings about good works are part of the Sermon on the Mount. Good works are good deeds or actions to be done from the spirit of goodwill or the intention of a charity as the cause. They are to be done, as mentioned in our lesson, to our neighbor. As the lawyer who posted the question in Luke, we may ask, who are our neighbors? The definition of the neighbor is a little obscure to immediately grasp up. Yet we need to know who neighbors are to exercise charity properly. The heavenly doctrines for the new church state, the neighbor is the object towards whom charity is to be cherished and to whom charity is to be manifested. Neighbor is not only is an individual person, one's neighbor, but also a group of people through the community, whether small or large, is one's neighbor as is one's country, the church, the Lord's kingdom, and above all others, the Lord. All these are meant by the neighbor whom one should be moved by charity to benefit. We recognize that charity is performed toward somebody who is outside of ourselves, are we feeling missing something on the list, something very important? What about my spouse, my children, and myself? Are we supposed to be excluded from loving and caring? The Lord is aware of this difficulty. We read in the Arcana Celestia, Heavenly Secrets, it is quite common for people to say, that everyone is a neighbor to himself, that is, everyone ought to, to take care of himself first. Unless we first acquire the necessities of life for ourselves, we are never in a condition, in a position to reach out to the neighbor. We become in want of everything first. Thus, First, we need to provide our mind and body with the necessary things. Yet it teaches further that though everyone is a neighbor to oneself, this is not of the first, but of the last and lowest importance. Charity to oneself is pictured as laying a foundation for building a house. A worker lays the foundation at first, but the purpose of the foundation is to build a house, and the purpose of the house is to provide 
a dwelling place. Charity toward ourselves is laying the foundation for performing charity. The Lord is the highest neighbor to be loved above all others, but we are the last. Between these two, there are too many, so many neighbors who is more important or who is less important to us. Do we treat everyone equally as our neighbor? The heavenly doctrines answer to this question likewise. Everyone also is the neighbor in accordance with the quality of his goodness. It is reiterated, the quality of good determines in what degree and in what proportion anyone is the neighbor. Let's remind us of the parable, the Good Samaritan. When a man fell among robbers, he was left half dead. A priest passed by, also a Levite, but a Samaritan bandaged his wounds, poured oil and wine, took him on his own animal, and led him to an inn, and ordered that he should be taken care of. Because the Samaritan exercised the good of a charity, he is called the neighbor by the Lord. Anybody can be our neighbor as much as he or she does goodness for others. Nevertheless, a good neighbor isn't the only one to whom charity is to be performed. The Lord said, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. How can we love those people who take advantage of us? Is loving the enemy different from loving the neighbor? No, it is not. The heavenly doctrines point out that loving the neighbor is not only wishing well and doing good to a relative, a friend, or a good person, but also a stranger, one who is not a friend or a wicked person. Loving the enemy should be considered a part of loving the neighbor. Does this mean that we are taught to treat the wicked and evil in the same way as we do the good? Moreover, the Lord says in Matthew, But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. From these teachings, we might wonder how can we survive in this violent world? In this teaching, the Lord is especially speaking of life in the other world. In the spiritual world, there is the law of retaliation. By it, every good spirit and angel are protected by the Lord from all evil doing and harm attempted by evil spirits. When evil spirits wish to inflict evil on the good, they are punished, and the evil which they intended to others returns upon themselves. The law, this law is reflected in the passages of Leviticus and Matthew as fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. The angels of heaven do not wish the retaliation of evil for evil, but from the heavenly charity they forgive freely, for they know the Lord protects from the evil all who are in good. Angels can be relaxed, but unfortunately we don't have such an immediate protection system in this world. If we don't resist the evil, we will fall prey to fraud, vandalism, serious crimes. How can we secure our safety in this world unless we resist the evils? 
In answering this question, we need to understand that there are three degrees or steps or parts in charity, which are end, cause, and effect. Our highest neighbor is the Lord, and the highest charity is love to the Lord. From this love, our love to the neighbor should come forth, because loving neighbors is no other than loving what the Lord loves. Loving the neighbor or charity is participating in divine love toward the entire humanity. The primary end or purpose of a charity is love to the Lord. This celestial love becomes the end in loving the neighbor. Charity from our love to the Lord becomes the cause and good actions are the effect. In other words, love to the Lord, which is the end, through goodwill to others or charity, which is the cause, is manifested in doing actual good deeds, which is the effect. Seeing our charity in its three degrees and the cause and effect, enlightens us on how to treat our neighbors and enemies. We need to have the same love and charitable spirit as the end and the cause in dealing with others, no matter whether they are good or evil. However, the effect, which is external actions, can be different. We read, Charity is exercised in different ways with these two groups by means of a direct kindness to a relative or a friend, but by indirect kindness to one who is no friend or a wicked. These indirect kindnesses are done by way of appeals, penalties, and punishments and so by attempts to reform him. We, as parents, discipline children at times, but we do this from our love and care. Sometimes consequences are, in, are involved in forceful measures, but they are still displays of love. We are supposed to have the same type of attitude and method in dealing with evil people or our enemies. So we can, from charity, resist an evil attacker, punish a guilty party so far as it is beneficial, and chastise the wicked people in appearance, but at the same time, we wish them well in our hearts. By this proper use of charity in its effect, good people can be protected in this imperfect world, as well as a wicked person can have a chance to be reformed in isolation. This is a real charity because it can be defined as doing good to the neighbor daily and constantly, not only to the neighbor as an individual, but also collectively. In this world, we can prudently love our neighbor according to their quality with them. What we can do for the neighbor and the enemy is to perform charity from love and goodwill and to let them know what is right. Just as the Lord makes his sun rise, which represents the, the divine good flowing in on the evil and on the good, and sends rain, which signifies the divine truth flowing in on the just and on the unjust. We participate in the Lord's love towards his people from good willing where our love to the Lord can live in use despite our forceful apparent measures. Are there dangerous people around us? 
Do you ever experience evil doers' threats and misdemeanors? We can identify these people as enemies. We experience or could be exposed to various violence. We need to protect ourselves and our loved ones and prevent these evils from happening to innocent, good people. Sometimes we must employ physical force for self-defense, call the police, and proactively act. This is legitimate according to the New Church doctrines, because charity is to be practiced according to the quality of the neighbor. We read, we exercise charity in our dealings with our enemies and evil people by benefiting them indirectly through our warnings, corrective action, punishments, and therefore efforts to improve them. That the Lord wants us to perform these preventive and protective measures charitably. It seems paradox paradoxical, but it is possible. As we divided the charity into three portions and cause and effect, the end is our love to the Lord. The cause is our participation in the Lord's universal love, which is charity and goodwill toward the humankind. Our actual good works are the effect in which the end and cause are existent. We love our neighbors, regardless of their goodness and state of regeneration. We wish them well and intend to benefit them. However, we take different measures and perform various content of good deeds, depending on the quality of their love and goodness. The only difference is in our external action to them, not in our feeling not in our concern, not in our motivation. This means we are required to overpower evildoers and report their wrongdoings to authorities, but we try not to be motivated by hatred, anger, or a sense of revenge. We do this from zeal for the sake of goodness. We care about the spiritual welfare of the evildoer and the safety of the good people. What about religious enemies? In our reading, the Lord urges the multitude of Jewish people to love their enemies. It's quite evident from the teaching of the Jewish church that they were allowed to hate an enemy and also hated all who did not belong to their religion. How can we approach the people who think of the Lord and his word differently from ourselves? The Lord clearly teaches that we cannot hate them. We cannot persecute them as the Jewish nation did. On the contrary, we need to wish them well from love to the Lord and neighbor. The Lord also gives us some specific ways for us to love our enemies. He says to love the enemy, bless them, and pray for them. Here to love signifies charity, to bless instruction and to pray intercession. We need to be charitable to our enemies while we teach them the right thing to do and wish them well. Of course, this cannot be easy. It is very natural for us to cherish our love only for good and close neighbors. However, the heavenly doctrines clearly point out that a person was not born for his own sake, but for the sake of others, that is, so he could not live for himself alone, but for others. We read, 
If you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Amen. And now to the one only God, Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen.